Hi, minivan music class time. We'll be reading from Lives of the Musicians, Good Times, Bad Times, and What the Neighbors Thought. Fabulous book. Uh, Johann Sebastian Bach is our composer today, one of my favorites. He was fantastic. Um, quite an extraordinary person. I want you to write down 10 things that you learn about Johann Sebastian Bach. Let's go. German organist and great composer, best known for the Brandenburg Concertos, the Goldberg Variations, and the Well-Tempered Clavier. What's the Clavier? It's what people played before they had pianos. Um, and the Well-Tempered part, Well-Tempered means well-tuned piano. So we will call it the well-tuned piano today because nobody really plays a clavier anymore. Here we go. As a young music teacher, Bach was out walking one night when six of his own pupils attacked him. They wanted an apology. Bach had called one of them a nanny goat bassoonist, someone who makes the bassoon sound like a goat. But Bach wouldn't take it back. He drew a knife in self-defense. Luckily, the fight was broken up before anybody was really hurt. So Bach was serious about playing the bassoon in his orchestra. All of his life, Bach had trouble with people who didn't see things his way. He once wanted to quit a job, but his employer, a duke, a duke is like a prince, wanted him to stay. Bach was so insistent, the duke threw him in jail. But here's the difference between Bach and the average stubborn person. During the month that Bach spent in jail, he wrote 46 pieces of music, music that we still listen to 300 years later. How could Johann Sebastian Bach ever have thought of becoming anything else other than a musician? His is the largest family music tree in history. Almost all of his male relatives, all of his uncles, uh, grandfathers, fathers, his sons, his nephews, they were all musicians, 76 of them in all. And 53 of them were named Johann. Do you know what Johann means? Johann is the German form of John. Bach's mother read him Bible stories and his father taught him the violin, sometimes late into the evening. But both parents were dead by the time Bach turned 10 and he went to live with his brother. His brother was a nice guy. Bach was able to support himself before he was 15. He sang and took organ playing jobs in towns near enough to walk to. Bach was always dedicated to music, music even if it meant blisters, because they didn't have Nikes and Reeboks back then. Once he walked 200 miles just to hear the great organist Dietrich Buxtehuda play. Now that's a mouthful. The organist's name was Dietrich Buxtehuda, a very famous German organist. Bach spent his whole life in one small part of Germany. He was married twice, first to his cousin, they did that back then, Maria Barbara, and after she died to Anna Magdalena, who was a good singer and a keyboard player. Bach was a choir conductor for one of his jobs, and Maria was a singer, a little cute little soprano number in, the, in his uh, choir. Anna Magdalena helped Bach in his work so much that her handwriting came to look just like his. Bach produced 1,200 <clears throat> musical works and fathered 20 children, oh, but only 10 lived to adulthood. Five were named Johann, two Johanna, and four grew up to be famous composers themselves. In his free time and at night, Bach would sit in his armchair, smoking his pipe and drinking a beer with a baby Bach on his lap as his wife and children played and sang. Bach loved food and coffee. Once he wrote a whole cantata just about coffee. Among his most prized possessions were two silver coffee pots. Bach loved children also. He taught all of his children, including his daughters, how to play the harpsichord with the clavichord and the violin and the recorder. So Bach was very much into educating all of his children and his wives. He taught Maria uh, and Magdalena to play as well. Bach was known as a dazzling organist. His strong legs pumped the pedals. His large hands performed acrobatics on the keyboard and he'd even use a stick in his mouth to reach certain notes. But he wasn't a show-off. 
He said of his playing, there's nothing remarkable about it. All you have to do is hit the right key at the right time and the instrument plays itself. Later in life, Bach went blind, but probably from copying his own music and poor lighting for so many years. He died of a stroke at age 65. Remember, back in 1685 to 1750, they only had oil lamps and candles in the fireplace to read by. Hardly any of his music was published while he was alive, nor did he expect it to be. That means that, you know, on Monday and Tuesday, Bach would write music to be played in church on Sunday. He'd write music on Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, he would teach the music to his choir, Wednesday and Thursday. And then Sunday, it was performed. And then Monday and Tuesday again, he'd write another, another piece of music. So <clears throat> he did that his entire life. He was a professional. His music had an immediate purpose. Not until about a hundred years after his death did the genius of Bach begin to be widely recognized. Here's some musical notes, some trivia facts for you. Bach wrote the Goldberg Variations to relax a millionaire. One of his pupils, Johann Goldberg, worked for an insomniac count. A count is like a, a duke a prince who needed music to get to sleep. The count sent the most generous payment Bach ever received. So Bach was paid to write some boring music so this guy could fall asleep. And he did. And he got paid a lot of money for it. The famous two-part inventions or ideas. And there are books about this thick. He wrote them for his children so that his, his children could learn to, for both hands to play the clavichord or the harpsichord or the organ independently and it strengthens your fingers and teaches you a lot of things about playing the instrument. The Brandenburg Concerto, oh, he wrote six concerto, and these were like a job audition to get a job. He, he wrote these beautiful pieces of, of music for, um, for someone because he wanted a certain job. He didn't get the job, but guess what? They are some of the most popular works in classical music history today. I've played them. I've listened to them. They're beautiful. I, I don't know who did not pick Bach for the job, but I'm so glad he wrote that music because he gave us a treasure. That's in your required listening. Scroll down in the description and you will see the links to the Brandenburg Concerto there for you. Marianne Ziegler, a poet who had published three books, supplied the words for several of Bach's works. In working with her, Bach was ahead of his time. You know why? Because back then, they were really backwards. They didn't let women have anything to do with writing music, composing music, or performing music, except to sing in a choir if you were a soprano or an alto. That's the only way you could participate. So for Bach to use Marianne Ziegler's words in his music, Big compliment, way to go Bach. The two Voyager spacecraft, have you heard of these things? In 1977, NASA sent up two rockets. They sent them out of the solar system and it contained inside of these rockets, they had a capsule, different things about us as human beings, about our planet and what we know and who we are and things that we've made. They included three of box pieces of music in the Voyager spacecraft and a little record player to play them on too. So that's pretty neat. So listen, I hope you enjoy Bach as much as I do and listen to those pieces of music. See you next time. Bye.